Good morning, internets. Um, so, update on the CarMax saga. Um, my car, I was told, was going to be shipped from Reno to Las Vegas so that um, the Volt could be worked on here after everything that happened um, in, in Reno. Uh, and and I've been given the loaner. I'm still in the Chevy Sonic right now. Um, I was told initially, like, when Reno and I said, how long is it going to take to ship my car? The guy was like, I don't know, could be three weeks, could be a month. That scared the absolute crap out of me, but I had no choice but to leave the car. Um, so I was really pleasantly surprised when they called me yesterday to tell me not only is the car shipped, but it's already in Vegas. It's already here and being worked on by Chevy. So I'm extremely pleased with that. But here's one of the things that I have learned. Um, um, number one, I am shocked that the best service I've gotten throughout this whole thing, even though the car is under Chevy's warranty, the best service I've gotten has not been from Chevy. It's not been from GM. It has been from CarMax. Um, and given all the, the service problems I had with CarMax before, I'm pretty, I'm surprised and delighted that CarMax has come through for me the way that they have. Um, as, as things have escalated and things have gone on, they really wanted to do right by me and make all my past experiences right. And so far they've done that, you know, I will say for sure when I get my keys in my hand, um, and I'm back in my Volt and everything is good. Um, but, um, Chevy itself has been pretty deplorable, which it upsets me because I'm really happy with their product, but I haven't been happy with the way I've been treated by Chevy. So that's been a little on the downside, but I want to talk a little bit about what I've learned. Um, I know you guys don't know me and you don't know anything about my taste in cars other than I drive an electric car. Um, you don't know any of my history with vehicles. It's actually a really big deal for me to buy something that's so technologically advanced um, to buy an electric car and to buy something that is so computer controlled because I like having control over my car and I, when things go wrong with it, I like to be able to fix it myself. If I can't fix it myself, I'd like to be able to watch it be fixed and learn how to do it myself for the next time. Um, and if I, it, you know, in lieu of that, I like to at least be able to understand what's going on. Um, I like the car to give me feedback and tell me what's wrong with it. You know, when you have a traditional gas burning motor and something goes wrong with it, I mean, we've had them for so long. There's a car guy everywhere that can tell you everything about like, Oh, I know that motor and I know what that sound is. And that's a problem with your intake manifold, or I know that vibration and that's a problem, you know, with your, your power steering pump or, you know what I mean? Like there's mechanical things that go wrong. And then there's things that can be diagnosed because the, the steering wheel and the, the, the accelerator and the brakes, like they all give you feedback. Um, you know, there's mechanical feedback, but there's in the, in the vault, everything in its computer controlled. When I hit that, the, the gas pedal, isn't a gas pedal. It's a switch that it tells the car how much more to accelerate it and how much more power to give it. And a computer is actually the one in charge of allocating that power, um, according to my mechanical motion. So it doesn't give me the feedback. Um, I feel very disconnected, um, in a way that I didn't before, you know, as soon as the car started throwing codes and stuff, I, I had no way of knowing what caused it or what was going on with it. And there's a lot of people, you know, a lot of you online and a lot of my subscribers have been helping me out, you know, telling me things that have been wrong with the car and tell me about your own personal experiences, which I've really appreciated. And that's helped a lot, but to give you an idea how out of my depth I am here, um, my, and I still want to own one one day, but like my previous dream car, if I could get any car and this is, you guys are going to cringe, but I wanted an AMC Eagle. Um, I wanted to rip the motor out of it because you can't get AMC parts and put in a small block Chevy. And I thought that that would be like the ideal car because I like to camp and I like to hike and those things go everywhere. It's quirky. It's weird. Um, like me with the funky tweed interiors, um, and the, the super funky AMC exterior look, um, they're lifted a little bit you know, put some all-terrain tires on it and it looked like a go everywhere vehicle without a bunch of computer controlled nonsense that would give me, but like if there was something broken on it, I could fix it with a wrench. You know, I needed some like ratchets and um, some brake clean and some WD-40 and some duct tape. Like everything on the car could be fixed with that and I would be good to go. Um, that, you know, that's not practical for me to be burning gas every day um, with as much as I drive. That can't be a daily driver. And I'm not in a position right now where I can have a fun weekend car. Someday I really want a fun weekend car where I can go out and do stuff. But right now the car that I drive needs to be the only car that I drive and it needs to get me to work and do the things that I need to do. And that's why I went electric. But being from, you know, the old school of work on your car shit. And that's, you know, where I'm, that's where my basis of knowledge is. And now into an electric car where I'm scared to touch anything on it because of the warranty on the high voltage charging system, the warranty on my battery pack, because I don't know, because I don't like other people wrenching on my car right now, but it occurs to me that nobody's wrenching on my car right now. There's nobody picking up a tool and working on my car. They're plugging in computers 
and you need a degree in computer programming and electrical engineering anymore to work on some of these cars. And so I'm, I'm learning a lot, but what I'm learning the most is how much I still don't know and, um, how much more there is to learn. I don't want to be one of those chicks on the road that knows nothing about her own car. I mean, I've never wanted to be that girl. Um, and I've worked really, really hard not to be no matter what it was I was driving. And now in the Volt, I feel like I'm suddenly in that position again. And I have to work very, very hard to get caught up. Um, I, I did a bunch of reading about the car and I, I was familiar with the car. I'd seen him on the road. I knew what a Volt was, um, before I bought it, but I just, I didn't know as much as I thought I did. And, um, I adore the car. It's a wonderful, wonderful vehicle. And the more I find that people to have them, people really, Really, really love these cars. Um, so I know that it's, it's, I have a good product and I've been hosed by bad service from Chevy. Um, and, and a few times some bad service with CarMax, but they're definitely going out of their way to make it right. But I'm finding out now how much I, I just, I just don't know about it. You know, I've always done all of my own basic maintenance and repairs, my own fluids, um, do my own, you know, brakes. I mean, I'm calipers, rotors, the whole nine yards. Um, I, I can do all of that stuff on all my old cars, but I, there's so much on this car that I just can't do. Um, now I could probably handle my own brakes and I could probably handle my own fluids on the thing, but everything under the hood is covered in all these warning signs that say, don't touch, don't take off, don't do anything because it will blast you and you'll die. So like, I can't rip it apart to figure out how it works. So at this point I'm pretty much stuck with technical manuals and trying to, you know, learn my machine that way. Um, but for those of you out there that, you know, I mean, electric cars are fairly new to all of us. Um, are you guys on your first electric car? Have you ever had one at all? Are you on your second or third? You know, what things have you learned along the way? Um, what was the most thing, the, the most difficult thing about transitioning from um, internal combustion engine to electric cars and hybrid cars? What was the most, I mean, are you, am I, am I alone here with this whole feeling like you're letting go and giving up control of the car thing? Um, because of all the things that we can't fix on them ourselves, because I mean, I, I have a collection of computers and all the OBD and, and this and that I can plug into the thing to do this thing, but there's, there's more to it than that. And there's this big giant information system that, you know, your, your OBD two is not going to communicate with. Um, and, you know, you need the car from Chevy and they, it's designed for you to not work on it yourself. Um, and as I ra I railed against it for years, I never wanted anything I couldn't work on myself. And then now I, I've found myself in that situation where I have a car that I can't work on myself, um, as much as I would like to. So does anybody else have that, that, that feeling of anxiety about giving up the control to mechanics and giving up the control to, you know, professionals at dealerships and stuff. Do you miss working on your own cars? Um, or am I completely alone in crazy town here? Um, just wanted to check in with you guys. I've been sick the last couple of days. Um, apologies if I sound like Bob Dylan cause I'm really sick right now, but I filled, I'm gacked on cold medicine and decongestants. I got to get back to work. Um, but I want to know what you guys think. Like, am I the only one here or am I totally weird now? Um, this is Catherine with EVs in Nevada. I hope everybody's having a good week. And take your, uh, wash your hands and take all your vitamin C, man, because this bug's going around and it's real. It's not fun. Um, but I hope y'all are having a really, really great day. Stay healthy, stay safe, and uh, let me know what's up in the comments. Oh, and I found out apparently the uh, there's a like button and it matters if you hit it. And it would be cool if you hit like and subscribe is what they tell me. So, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Everybody have a super good day.